right guys, welcome back to Creativity Corner. We're gonna be making a tasty treat today, some color wheel cookies. And we're gonna be learning about color theory and eating our art at the same time. How cool is that? So I went into the grocery store and I got some vanilla wafers or whatever kind of cookie you really like you can get. Um, but this is what um, I know other art teachers use. And I got some vanilla frosting, just make sure, make sure it's a white frosting. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to start with three blobs of frosting. So make sure you get a good scoop for each one. Okay. And I have six knives because I'm going to be making quite a few colors. So I'm going to start with my primary colors. Remember our primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. So I'm going to go find this in here. And you might have tubes. You might have more of the dropper kind. That's fine. Whatever you got. Now I could use my green and my purple and my orange and stuff from this bag, but I'm going to be creative and I'm going to challenge myself to make it all with these. So I'm going to start with my red. Your red is, it's going to take a lot of red to get red, okay? And it might taste a little funky, but you do need quite a bit of red to get a red color. And I'm going to just gently mash it. You can wear gloves if you're worried about staining your hands. But I think it's fun when you get stains on your hands because it just makes your hands more fun for the day. Who cares? You're not going anywhere. Got some nice red frosting there. If it's too pink, just add more food color. Get it mixed up so you don't see any streaks left. Kind of scoop it up from the bottom and turn it over and mash it down. Okay, rotate. Some blue. I like this gel food color because it doesn't splash. But the camera is getting some cool close-ups right now. <laughs> this is the satisfying part. And you haven't even eaten it yet. Oh my goodness, look at that blue. Isn't that beautiful? Keep mixing until you don't see any more streaks or blobs of color. Now let's make our yellow. Kind of squeeze it down into the little pit that I made in the frosting. That kind of helps keep it off of the knife. And I can kind of fold it in that way. Be careful you don't bump into the other colors. Keep it contained in its own corner. So they don't get mixed up. Okay. I think I want this to be a little brighter. I'm going to use a little bit more. Really turn it over and mash it down. That helps more than swirling like this. This will move it around everywhere, but this will really get it warped in there. Okay. Now I have my primary colors done. These are the first colors. These are the colors that you can't make. You have to get them from pigment, something that has that color in it that's either liquid or powder. Um, so if you've ever tried to mix blue paint, I bet you didn't have any luck. 
Now I'm gonna take another plate and I'm going to make some orange. Take some of my red and some of my yellow, not, not even half of it, just like maybe a third or a quarter of it. I might even have too much red, so I'm gonna just kinda use a little bit at a time. How's that? Oh, an interesting peachy color. Such a pretty orange. There we go. There's one of our secondary colors. Okay. Now let's make our green. Usually when you're using yellow, you need more of the darker color. When you mix paint, there's something always to remember, dark into light, do it right, and you won't make too much paint. If you try to put light into a dark color and keep adding light over and over again, you'll make too much. So dark into light, do it right. Pretty green there. Now I need my violet, my purple. This is about equal parts. Now, I could go even further and I could make my tertiary colors, my colors like yellow green and blue violet and red orange you know those ones that have two names that are in between the primary and secondary colors your purple might not be super pretty but it will be purple if it's too red just add a little more blue Now I have my primary colors and my secondary colors. It's time to put them all together. So I'm gonna take my serving plates. Oh, they don't wanna come apart. There. Let's take our cookies. Pick out some nice ones that aren't too broken. Six, or I could do 12 and do six tertiary colors on top of that. So I could uh, put these in a little plastic baggie and pipe them on, but this works good. So red starts here. Now remember our rainbow order, Roy G. Biv, except indigo is blue violet. So we're not counting it, so Roy G. Biv. So we're gonna do our red, our orange, our O, and then Roy, yellow comes next. part. I like to think of Roy G. Bibb as a little rainbow colored gnome. A little garden gnome, you know? That just seems appropriate for him. My, my mental image of who Roy G. Bibb is. He's not a real person, it's just a name we made up to remember the rainbow. And there we have it. We got a colorful snack and I learned about color mixing in the process, and you will too. Um, if you have any 
um, kids who need something with less sugar, or if you want to do something different, you can always use yogurt. You can use um, whipped cream, Cool Whip. Um, you could use something unflavored, like an unflavored yogurt that works too. Um, baby food, if it's a light color one, like pear. Um, you know, you can make some, some stuff that's that's not overly um, sugary if you need that for your family. Um, I'm sure there's lots of great frosting recipes out there too if you want to make your own. Um, so this is my color wheel cookie uh, craft and I hope you guys have fun making one too and eating it as well. Mm. Hey guys, welcome back to Creativity Corner. I see you're still trapped in your living room. It might be rainy outside and you might be sad and that's okay because I have a solution for you. Maybe not a magical fix it everything solution, but it will certainly make you feel better. I promise. So these are comfort boxes. I learned about these just this year and I cannot believe I never learned about this before in my life. They're so cool. And I had so much fun making mine. I started with a box and you're gonna find out what's in it here in just a sec. I took some nice magazines that I had laying around that I didn't read anymore and I, I looked through them and I found things that made me happy or peaceful, things that made me feel calm and I tore them out, set those aside. Then I took my pieces and I glued them all over a box that I had. And you can see it's not perfect, but it makes me happy. And you know, if you had a little Mod Podge to go over the top of that, that would help. A little decoupage glue. Um, but I just didn't have any at home and you could mix a little bit of water and glue together and paint that over the top and it will do the same thing. It just might be a little cloudy. Um, so I did this nice continual thing across the front, found a nice quote, now is the time to start listening. And inside my box, I have things to delight the senses. So there's things in here for hearing, for sight, for taste, for smell, and for touch. So I have a feather, I like to collect feathers wherever I go. I have one of my favorite books from when I was a kid that my mom read me, The Velveteen Rabbit. That was the time when they had um, an illness going around too and he had to give up his beloved rabbit um, to save himself and others. Kind of a relevant story. Um, I have just a little crossword that I found in one of my magazines. I like to do crosswords when I'm stressed out. I have a nice exercise band. Do some stretches, because exercise, you know that, always makes us feel a little bit better. Get your heart rate moving. And remind me to stretch. I have a real nice long ribbon here. Ooh, how tactile and nice is that? Things that make you happy when you handle them, when you smell them, when you see them, when you listen to them. That's what you want to put in your comfort box. I have a bracelet that one of my students gave me. This is really special because it reminds me that, you know, I have an important job and, and I'm important to other people. That's something cool to put in your box, something that reminds you that you are important. I have some nice room spray. Get your smeller going. I have a nice little Packet of tea and sugar. A little chamomile for relaxing. I've got some candy, again, for taste. I have a band, a nice stretchy band. My cat loves these. Do your cats love these? Oh man, my cat Ned steals them all the time. This is a crazy old necklace that I wore for a, a costume like once, but I just love how it feels in my hands, you know. Find something in your house that's not really being used and that's not super duper special to someone else. Maybe it's special to you though and you can put it in your comfort box. I also have a piece of silk from a project I was working on. I love how nice soft fabric feels. 
I have some tissue paper. Sometimes if you want to just destroy something, paper is a great way to do that. You can just tear little pieces. I have a couple of note cards, a postcard, and a nice little piece of stationery if I wanted to send a little letter, tell somebody how I feel. Or I could write a letter to myself and say, hey, you know, life's not so bad. You'll be okay. I promise it'll get better. And I also have a couple of my favorites, some Radiohead and some Sigurós. And that is all in my comfort box. And when I feel stressed and when I feel like I just can't anymore and everything is just too much, I'm not overwhelmed, I go grab my comfort box and I sit with it for a little bit, take each item out, handle it, smell it, taste it, whatever it is, and that will calm me down and it'll calm you down too. I promise it'll work. Make a comfort box, keep it close, and use it when you need it. Thanks guys, see you later. Hey guys, welcome back to the Creativity Corner. Today we're gonna be making some family paper quilts. This is something great to do with the whole family. And you can even do this by sending stuff in the mail to other family members and having them send it back to you and then put it together. Everyone gets their own block. This quilt here behind me is made of fabric, but we're gonna be making one with paper because this is something that takes quite a bit of skill to know how to do, but we can always cut paper, even if we're a little tiny. So, if you can hold scissors, you can make a paper quilt. I'm gonna choose some nice colors. And you're gonna wanna choose your colors together as a family so that it all works together. If I just use these two sets of paper, this would all look pretty good together because blues and oranges are opposites on the color wheel. They're complementary colors. So these will all be nice together. Think about your color scheme before you start. If you don't want it to be too tacky, make sure you've got a nice assortment of paper. So I'm gonna take some of my paper colors that I like. Maybe this nice dark color, I like that. Um, I think I need a red. Yeah. Kinda matches what I got going on back here, doesn't it? <laughs> My subconscious likes that, I guess. So then the whole family gets a block. And now I'm gonna use a soda box, tear it up at the seam, and then I'm gonna cut the section out of it. Just that nice flat piece is what we're going for. Now you're gonna wanna make all your blocks the same size so that they all fit together like a puzzle when you're done. And I'm seeing this area here, looks like a nice square already. So I'm gonna take it. And you could take something that's already square in your house and trace it, or you could use a ruler. I'm just gonna eyeball mine. And then I'm gonna take it, and once I have a nice square that's a good size, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna cut some more. Now, if I used a ruler, this would certainly look nicer, wouldn't it? But I'm just gonna show you guys quick. Take our pieces, and there's, there's four people in my family, so I'll make four. One for mom, one for dad, and one for Emma. Okay, get rid of that stuff. Just make sure you clean it up when you're done, right? Okay, so I got my nice four pieces. They fit together well. And now each person is gonna take one of these and they're going to take some of the paper. You can chop it up into some smaller pieces and I think we better make them the same size 
as this cardboard. And your cardboard, like I said, doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna use maybe a ruler and you're gonna glue paper on top. So, use my pencil. And I'm gonna measure, it's about four and a half inches, so I'm gonna go this way too. make a couple of stacks. So I think I'll measure from over here again. So remember I need two marks on my paper for a straight line to happen. You gotta have two points to line up. Remember measure twice, cut once. Now, I, mean, I could take all of these and just cut them all at once or I could do them single. Either way, it will work fine. You just might get cleaner edges if you do them one at a time. And we're gonna be making something called half square triangles, and it's exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna take a square, and we're gonna cut them in half. We're gonna just call this a wonky quilt because wonky is sometimes fun in art. Draw a line corner to corner, a nice diagonal line right like that. Take my scissors and cut. Now you might have the whole family around the table. You might all be in the living room. You might be outside but just make sure that you talk to each other while you're doing it. It's not a, you go in this corner, I'll go in my room and dad goes to the garage and do it. It's more of a get together and do it. And if you're mailing it to family, get them on, on a virtual chat and do this together. This is a group activity. Now I have some half square triangles. Now I'm going to make some quarter square triangles. And these, Line my, my two pieces of paper back up. Put it back kind of how you had it. I should have drawn my line first. That's okay. It's okay to make mistakes, you know? Everybody makes mistakes, that's how we learn. <clears throat> so I'm essentially making my, my puzzle pieces for my quilts. And these are all gonna fit together because they're half and quarter square triangles. So now I have some nice shapes. Maybe mom and dad wanna cut these out and the kids can arrange them if they're real small. Um, so then I can take my piece and decide what I want to make. Um, do something like this. Can throw in a little of that. Look at that. Push those together so they meet in the middle. Hmm, I think I want. I'm just gonna pretend I'm another person here. There's tons and tons of different ways you can make these fit together. They don't all have to fit together the same way on each block. Make it different, each one. In quilting, we call that a sampler because it's got a little of everything. I could go a little bit crazy. Do something a little different. I think I like that blue one on top. That's kind of different. I like that. Once I am happy with my piece, I can then glue that together, and then you can take the whole thing and glue it together and put it in a frame, or you could take this and laminate it 
You could take this and take each piece and cover it in packing tape if you don't have a laminator. That'll keep it nice and watertight. If you wanted to put it on your fridge, you can glue magnets on the back and have some cool magnets for your refrigerator. Um, and then, you know, if you wanted to add more, you always can. Just take a little, snip a few pieces and make some more shapes. You do you. Now, if everybody's using half square triangles, they'll all fit together pretty well and it'll all look good together and you can just keep cutting those in half and half again. And make even smaller pieces. Small details. Small, small details are really what make a piece of art go from blah to wow. See how it's getting a little more exciting the more I add to it. So think layers, 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 layers. Now you could um, look up traditional quilt blocks and make something that's more classic, like um, an Ohio star or a pinwheel. Um, you can do whatever you really like. And you know, what's special about this is, is you can do it as a whole family. And everyone can be involved and feel like they're successful at this one. So this is a great way to use up some colored paper and cardboard and not make too big of a mess at home. Um, so that's, this is my paper quilt and I could do whatever I want with it at this point. Magnets, frame it, um, laminate it, whatever you feel. And I could even, I would say, I would say duct tape is probably your best bet for gluing these together, but make sure you glue your, put your tape on the back so that it doesn't show. So pretending those are glued on, I would take that, flip it over, and take my tape, make sure they're lined right up together, just like that. And they'll hold together pretty well that way. Now, so that's our family paper quilt, and you guys will surely make one that is very different than mine. Take care, everybody. Make sure that you take care of each other during this time. Talk to you later.